Bro, you don't need the eye to see that she's got the rash, man. You don't need to, oh, tune your blow it up and be like, oh, she has the red rash. You can freaking see it. この like when you think of a powdered form, generally it is meant for inhalation, whether that is like through the mouth or through the nose. Generally, if it's just a powder by itself, it's through the nose because it's easy, right? Um, also, because if you try to eat it, um, like it'll just kind of go down the wrong hole. Uh, it'll feel really weird for the patient. Um, and it's not a great use of resources. Um, it's a lot... <sighs> Easier for the patient, it's a lot more effective as well if, uh, you know, you make it into a syrup, you know, or some sort. You dissolve it in something, right? Um, generally, powders are only used um, for things like asthma, so respiratory diseases, um, or things that are generally better absorbed when they pass, when they completely bypass your gut, right? So, the fact that he's provided this in powdered form is not great, <laughs> Unless he's given her instructions specifically to mix it up to, like, with such and such amount of water or something, such and such volume, and then take it every four to six hours. So then she gets, you know, 500 megs every four to six hours, which will help with the fever and things like that. The only thing I will point out here is that uh, if she suddenly gets better, I mean, yes, it does help with symptoms. That's the point of paracetamol. It's there to relieve fever and pain and things like that, mild stuff. But it doesn't necessarily treat the underlying cause of... It doesn't treat the underlying uh, illness, for example. A Panadol does not help you suddenly fight off a bacterial infection, right? It just makes you feel better. Um, which, by doing that, will help you fight off the infection because you don't feel as crap, right? Um, but part of that feeling crap is the fact that your immune system is trying to... Uh, fight off the infection. That's why you get a fever and all the rest of it, right? Um, antibiotics, on the other hand, would help for a bacterial infection because it is actively trying to kill the bacteria that is causing the illness. So if she suddenly just gets magically better because she had paracetamol, yeah, yeah, I mean, sort of, kind of, not really, you know? Yakushin-sama? So she did just get better the next day. Oh my god. <laughs> and he's learning about his thing, of course, because he's a freaking researcher. Whoa, hold on. Alright, let's have a look at this. Uh, obviously, I can't read Japanese that well, so <laughs> I'm going to rely on the translations. No fever or rash, no findings on fingers, swelling in both knees, tenderness on the inside. Joint movement is deteriorating but still smooth. Gonotherosis, both knees, confirmed via diagnostic eye. Pain observed, having effect on daily life. Should avoid heavy lifting as much as possible. Confirmed presence of kidney damage. Prescribe NSAID. Okay. Oh yeah, he does write NSAIDs there. Okay. Uh, ugh, I don't agree with the NSAID prescription. Um... So, pharmacists can diagnose um, a lot of simple ailments, right? Um, that's why you kind of go to a pharmacist for like a cold or something, right? And then you'll be like, oh, I have a fever, headache, you know, runny nose, etc. Like, oh, okay, you know, what are, what other symptoms do you have? When did this start? Um, do you have a cough? That kind of thing, right? So, we can diagnose at least to a certain extent whether you know we can deal with it right there in the pharmacy so you don't have to go to a doctor or something like that or if it's something more serious um you know good example being like diarrhea if a child has had diarrhea for you know 24 hours or more probably should see a doctor that's not normal but in an adult yeah 24 40 hours yeah more than 72 though probably a bad idea any blood in the stool Anything at all is like pretty yikes. 
Um, especially if it's dark blood, then you've got real problems. Um, so yeah, like we can we can usually differential diagnosis simple ailments to make sure that you know you can get the best medical care that you need without having to overburden the medical system, right? And for a lot of um, in Australia anyway, you know, saving you some time <laughs> unless you go to a private doctor, in which case saving you some money as well. Um, yeah, so we can do that. And obviously, yes, we do have patient notes, particularly on. Um, Patients who come into the pharmacy very regularly, such as older people, that kind of thing about, you know, their conditions and things like that to make sure that we are we are dispensing the correct medication for them, especially when they move doctors or things like that or the primary care physician changes. Um, then we can share our notes with that doctor and say, hey, this is what they've had before. This is their current condition. Um, these are, you know, the medications they're on at the moment. This is how things are going. So this type of note taking isn't exactly um, unusual. Uh, it is a lot more doctor like than necessarily we would do, uh, because we'd be more concerned about medications and their history compared to uh, their symptoms in the moment. Um, because again, we're not really for the patients that we'd be taking notes on. They'd be having chronic conditions that are already being managed by a doctor, and they wouldn't necessarily be coming to us to differential diagnose um, those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, note taking looks fine. Confirm presence of kidney damage, prescribe NSAIDs, bad idea. NSAIDs uh, can cause kidney damage. So I don't think you would want to prescribe NSAIDs in this case, um, unless he means topical NSAIDs. Um, so NSAIDs, I should, point out what NSAIDs are first. So NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, so these are things like ibuprofen. Um, I'm trying to think of the generic name now. Um, I really should know this because it's freaking everywhere. Um, diclofenac, that's the word. That's the one I'm looking for, diclofenac. So um, ibuprofen is neurofen. That's the brand name. Uh, Diclofenac is Voltaren, right? And these come in topical um, preparations. So things like creams or ointments or sprays, those kinds of things. Those kinds of preparations, then yes, that's fine uh, because they work only locally on the, on the area. So as seen here, as he's um, diagnosed as gonathrosis, not 100% sure what that is, but it looks like it's a joint illness. If they are just uh, locally used as a topical preparation, as a skin preparation, that's fine. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it as a systemic thing because again, NSAIDs can cause kidney damage. There's a lot more nuance to that, but NSAIDs generally are a pretty bad idea when it comes to uh, kidneys failing. <laughs> um, so yeah, wouldn't recommend it. Um, especially when it comes to patients that have, you know, other conditions such as heart conditions, um, NSAIDs get like astronomically a bad idea to do systemically and there should be a better way of managing those symptoms. Um, yeah. <laughs> ああ、ファラ。さすが薬師の館だ。古典的な調剤道具は揃ってる。まずはロッテの赤切れに使ってもらう。ヘパラノイドクリームフォロット。原料を順番に合成していこう。あ、オッケー。そう。あ、ラガディフォームエクスマフ
gospel or anything. But like even with just regular eczema, right? Regative form eczema seems to be a something to do with like um what's the word? Chronic recurrent eczema, uh kind of in your in your hand especially. Um and it causes scaling and um sort of like uh what's the word? Like calluses, pretty much. Um, some people have it because of maybe a fungal infection, something like that. Um, but generally it's eczema is like hard work, like I think calluses, um, redness, swelling, soreness, that kind of thing. I've not heard of the term regatiform eczema, um, but it looks to be just chronic eczema, right? So redness, swelling, irritation, um, calluses. Um, scaly bits where the skin hasn't come back quite right and it's trying to protect itself because um, you're always coming to contact with, let's say, like an allergen or something. So he has prescribed, what was it? Hang on, let's go back a little bit. Alright, so he's prescribed a moisturizing heparanoid cream for Lotte. So heparanoids or... <laughs> Yeah, heparanoids are a derivative of a drug called heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant. Now, you uh, anticoagulant means that it prevents the blood from clotting. I don't understand why he's prescribing this for eczema. Um, heparanoid creams do exist for bruises, because essentially what a bruise is, is like your blood is kind of, you could kind of think of it as like a blood clot underneath your skin, right? That's why it comes up all purple and stuff. So the paranoid cream can work through the skin to try to um, break that clot up so you don't have the bruise anymore, right? Helps with bruises. Um, I don't know why it would help with eczema. Um, someone might be able to like correct me on that. Maybe it's a therapy I don't know about, but essentially... For eczema, I'd be looking at a steroid cream, to be honest. Um, so something like Novasone or something. Um, uh, what's the steroid called now? Corticosteroids. Um, Mometazone is the one I'm thinking of for Novasone is the brand name. So uh, Mometazone is a steroid cream that helps with uh, inflammation and swelling, redness, that kind of thing, right? So essentially, that's what eczema is. Um, you can make it moisturizing cream. You know, that's kind of what a cream is. It is a water-based uh, emulsion. Um, so those kinds of uh, topical preparations will help moisturize um, the area and kind of lock in the moisture, uh, the moisture to help with um, any dryness, anything like that. So I'd be looking at, you know, steroid creams to help with eczema. Don't know what a heparanoid cream is doing here, honestly. So he's making the cream. He's made some glycerol, so that's his fatty. That's his that's his oil um layer, his oil phase is the word I'm looking for. Oily phase. For the emulsifier and surfactant, I'll use glycerol monosterate. Yeah, I think that works. Let me just look that up. I'm pretty sure it does. I haven't done compounding in a while, I must admit. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an emulsifier. Yeah, yeah. So that works, all right. After producing, yeah, okay, yeah, I don't know. Heparanoid is a, is a derivative, so that makes sense. Oil phase will be oleaginous base, squalene, and cetyl alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense for a cream. Take the oil phase and the water phase with the base. All right, I'll just mute this. And ingredients mixed in and warm them both in water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gradually add the water phase to the oil phase. Yeah, 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 with the emulsifier added and stir quickly. Yes, okay. So if you're making an emulsion, you're making... Uh, in this case, a water-based emulsion. So what that means is that the oil is floating in the water. So uh, what an emulsion is, is essentially one liquid uh, suspended in another, right? And it's not what we call dissolved, it's suspended, right? So a really famous emulsion is milk. So milk, if you leave it out long enough, right, it'll eventually separate out. 
Um, oh, it won't. It won't separate out. Sorry, but essentially, water is uh, <laughs> milk is um, a water-based emulsion where the oil is suspended in the water. Um, so all the fatty bits of the milk, the like the little tiny particles of fat are all surrounded by water and they're kind of, you know, floating in the water. Essentially, it's something you can think of in a homogenous manner. So they're all evenly distributed throughout the water phase. Um, so when I talk about oil phase, I'm talking about the fat that is evenly distributed in the aqueous phase, is distributed in the water. So the way you make this is, yes, you have your oil phase, you have your water phase, like, separately. You heat them very gently to a uh, certain temperature. Usually for water, it's about 80 degrees. You don't really want it boiling because then it turns into a, a gas, obviously, into steam. So, you know, close to boiling, but not quite. Then you need to add your water phase super slowly into your, into your um, oil phase, into your fatty phase. Um, and you need to stir it pretty quickly, right? Once you stir it pretty quickly, it helps suspend it in the the it helps suspend the oil in the water, and you keep adding your water phase until you make it up to volume. And then eventually, if you've done it right, your emulsion should come together as it cools down, right? So in this case, he's doing it in a warm water bath, which is completely fine. So you have your both your oil phase have both your oil phase and your water phase in in the warm water bath together. And then because it's in the same like heating element, essentially the warm water, they'll both heat up to, you know, roughly the same temperature. Water phase goes in, stir, 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 and you've made your emulsion, right? Um, so that works. Um, in real life, what we do is we kind of whack both of them in to a microwave um, and we heat it probably 20, 30 seconds at a time and we stir each time easier way of doing it than having like a massive water bath right um so yeah the way he's making the emulsion completely fine i still don't agree that heparin is what he should be looking at or paranoids whatever you want um and he's apparently finishing the cream which is nice um so what's he finishing with essential oils for fragrance and then safe preservatives and stabilizers for shelf life very good um so they're not elaborating on that um but yes um i have added for example like eucalyptus oil um, to some creams that I've made for myself. Moisturizing cream, super simple, just aqueous cream. Got nothing really like active in it, but just helps with moisturizing and eucalyptus oil because, you know, when you're sick. <laughs> I used to use it when I had um, colds and stuff like that. Um, and like, um, especially when like, it's really windy in winter. Um, yeah, eucalyptus oil just seemed to like unblock my nose and things like that. Um, and to me, it smelled, you know, not... Uh, not pungent enough because it was dilute, right, in, in the cream. Um, so it was it was a nice smell for me. Um, but yeah. So say preservative stabilizes shelf life. Very good. Um, because, yeah, essentially when you make one of these creams, um, whatever you've got active in it, usually it lasts for about 28 days, about a month, um, without adding anything preservative to it. Um, these days in compounding... Um, the shelf life would be still around 28 days. Uh, I don't think that has changed unless you go to a specialist compounding pharmacy, in which case they've probably got, you know, stabilizers and preservatives of their own that they would then add to increase the shelf life. So then patients don't have to come in all the time for the um, prescription to get compounded. <laughs> So, well, hold up. So, no, 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 no. He didn't make a steroid cream. He said he made a heparanoid cream. Nah, boy, that doesn't fly. But to confirm, yes, you would use a steroid cream probably on um, redness, swelling, that kind of thing. So he's not wrong, I suppose, that you would put a steroid cream on it. Hang on, let me let me find it. What did he say exactly? Um, it dries out your hands. Yeah. Put this cream on the dry spots. Yeah, so it will help moisturize it. Put this steroid cell on the particularly bad spots. So yes, it will help with dryness, cracking, um, redness, swelling, that kind of thing. Because 
I'm assuming what he means by just particularly bad spots is stuff that hurts, that kind of thing. Steroid creams will help with that. Um, yeah. But as I said, he didn't make a steroid cream. He made a paranoid cream. It would just make his her blood extra thin. <laughs> so I don't... Uh, uh, yeah. Um, can I share this with my mom? No. I hope he says no. She has the same problem. Doesn't matter. You need to come see her. Other service as well. No, do not share your medications with other people. Yes, I'll make some of them for each of them after examining the symptoms individually. Yes, exactly. Even if they have the same bloody condition or whatever, doesn't matter. They need to come in, get examined, making sure that, you know, it's safe and appropriate for them. That the same that the medication is. We don't just, like prescribe medications on an individual basis because we like to make money or we don't dispense it because we like to make money we dispense it individually because each person's circumstances can be different therefore different medications are useful in different cases for example we want to we wouldn't want to give a medication that would cure your current problem of eczema but then cause you a heart attack and kill you as a complete hypothetical right so yes he's saying the good thing he has gifts to everyone else as well yes because he diagnosed them with his freaking eye because because you would not get that training as even a researcher or pharmacist or anything oh bloody hell all right chicken pox uh herpes simplex virus um not deadly if you get it as a kid um you know it just causes a fever red rash that kind of thing um, obviously, if you get it as an adult, it turns into shingles, which is a lot more nasty. Um, so we'll see what he does with chicken pox. This is pretty interesting. He will probably... The thing is, if you were an adult, yes, there are antivirals that you would prescribe. But as a child, you don't really need to do that. Like, paracetamol and water will do just fine. I guess you could get antivirals if you wanted to, but uh, chicken pox is... You know, a pretty mild illness. You don't really need to. Um, and antivirals can get pretty expensive depending on where you live. Um, so, uh, I mean, he's a magic boy, so maybe he'll just make, I don't know, uh, a cyclovir or something like that, right? Like some antiviral or something. I don't know. We'll see. It just occurred to me that I misspoke. Uh, Chickenpox is varicella, uh, varicella zoster, so it is still a virus. Um, but further complications means that shingles might take hold, which is technically herpes zoster, which is technically different. Um, it is a reactivation of the varicella zoster virus. So, yeah. I kind of misstoke. I just keep thinking about it in an adult context. It's herpes zoster, right? Um, so yeah, I was I was incorrect in saying that it's herpes simplex or whatever. That's oh, cold sores and things like that. My bad. Yeah, antivirals, I think, is going to go for... Yeah. So, acyclovir or valacyclovir are both antivirals. Um, again, children don't necessarily need this. Um, they don't necessarily get many complications, um, especially if they're healthy already. Um, I think they only really tend to shorten symptoms by about a day, but they don't decrease the risk of complications. So, yeah. I don't think he really needs to do it. Paracetamol for the fever. Completely fine. Just make sure, you know, wash hands. I think the hygiene part of it is probably more important. Um, so, you know, washing hands when you come into contact with a patient, things like that. Because you don't want this spreading. It spreads to adults, then we have a problem, right? Um, but, you know, generally just in kids, they can lie in bed, play video games, whatever they want to do. And it doesn't really cause a problem. I don't know how he's going to synthesize this stuff, though. Acyclovir is a less complex molecule. Whatever you say, buddy, I don't remember the chemistry. Don't scratch him, buddy. Bro, you don't need the eye to see that she's got the rash, man. <laughs> You don't need to, oh, 
Chuni blow it up and be like, oh, she has the red rash. You can freaking see it. That's the whole point of chicken pox. I don't understand. Bro. You don't need it. You already know she has chicken pox, my guy. Human herpes virus 3 infection. I thought we just established it's varicella. Herpes virus 3. Yeah, it's a very sour also. They're just being bloody fancy about it. But he comes with ambrosia. He comes with the cure. Okay, so it's not uncommon to put you know, medicine in other things for children, right? If it's a powder, I don't see why not. It couldn't go into macaron, sure, whatever, right? But we, we've done this for a long, long time, you know? That's why parents put, you know, the children's medication in food or whatever. Um, or, you know, we have uh, medicine syrups that taste, you know, like lollies or strawberry or whatever. So, you know, this... This makes sense. Of course, it might affect the drug's uh, effectiveness or something like that, but you want the child to at least have it, right? It's better that they have some than none. Um, and in this case, sure, putting in a macaron, probably not going to affect uh, the medication too much, um, as far as I know. Um, but at least if the kid eats it, then, you know, that's, that's the least you can hope for in this case. <laughs> Correct! Always ask your pharmacist about medications if you are unsure about anything. You should always drink lots of water. <laughs> lots of water is always good. Hydro homies. Woo! Correct! Back in medieval or whatever, but you know, we have medication now. And to be honest, it's not really, it, she doesn't really need a medicine for it. She just needs fever, like, um, suppression, that kind of thing. Um, the real medicine they needed was, um, you know, hygiene. And, you know, once hygiene was uh, discovered, germs, theory, the rest of it, you know, that kind of all fell into place. She is very cute. <laughs> she is very cute. Uh, not as cute as Anya, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a different video. Uh, <laughs> but it does kind of weird me out that he is essentially a research pharmacist that is sort of in middle aged. And now he just wants to play with kids uh, that aren't his own. Um, I guess she's his sister. I don't know if that makes it better or not. Uh, especially in an anime context, that might make it worse. Uh, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Tadachini Jumbi or Totono in a side. Kote Heka no Kinkyu Oshinda. Oh, that's the end. Okay. Um, look, there's some things that I'm confused about. I don't think a paranoid cream was the right uh, treatment prescription uh, for eczema. That I think is what he diagnosed, right? Uh, I don't think that's the right treatment. Um, the NZs in a patient that has kidney damage, also not a great idea. Um, it's not technically contraindicated if they don't have any other underlying conditions, but it's still pretty bad. Um, so there's a few technical details in here that I do disagree with. I don't know if that's because of the source material or it's an adaptation thing. Um, don't know. Um, and perhaps it's just me not having my own clinical knowledge up to date because, as I said... I'm working more on the research side. Um, so I might have forgotten a little bit of my clinical knowledge. So maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure those two, I'm pretty sure there are better um, treatment options 
for those two particular um, illnesses that were pointed out. In terms of the chemistry, things like that, the compounding, that was all pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about how he made anything. Um, obviously, being able to synthesize his own active compounds um, without having to go through all the extra carbon chemistry, all the extra um, organic chemistry that comes with it is pretty useful. Um, so yeah, look, um, in terms of the isekai bits, even though I didn't really put it in this video, like he does seem to have more of a idea about how special he is with his powers and things like that. I'm just glad he has his eye that apparently does all of the clinical work for him because I don't think as a researcher that he would be able to remember all this stuff about being able to link symptoms to illnesses. Uh, even I don't have that um, and I didn't have that when I was working in a pharmacy. Um, obviously, I had a lot more kind of in the back of my head about um, how to differential diagnose certain um, illnesses and things like that, but I wouldn't be able to necessarily tell you like all the contraindications for a um medicine for example but that's why we learn how to use the information resources at our disposal that we know are reliable and trusted and are endorsed by other pharmacists and the healthcare system to make sure that the decisions we make as healthcare professionals are in the best um will provide the best possible outcome for our patients so yeah I think this episode was pretty good. Um, some of the technical details got lost in there, but I think that the fact that they tried to give some information, even though some of it was false, um, that it's not all hogwash, that it is actually somewhat true, is is a good attempt. Um, their first episode was a lot better in terms of accuracy than their second, I think. Um, but yeah, look. What what can you hope for? It's a it's a isekai like thing first and foremost. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you'll join me on the next one. I should have other videos apart from just reaction videos coming out soon that are more in line with my foreigners guides or my uh, anime reviews that kind of thing. But um, if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, comment. If you have anything else you want me to touch on, or if I got anything wrong, especially in this episode where I'm not hundred percent on some things. But yeah. Hope I'll catch you next time.